Hi guys and welcome back to World of Tanks and it's another random destruction and right now we're in the Centennial, it's Mountain Pass and it's a tier 10 match. Now this is a match that I had earlier on today and it's not a brilliant match but it just goes to show that just because you're bottom tier it doesn't mean you sort of have to give up and you can still do quite well out of it. And this is uh, recorded and edited on my new setup with a new microphone and uh, my new editing software. So if anything is wrong, it's because I'm crap with it so far and haven't really figured it out yet. Um, but this one, the next one, are recorded using the capture card uh, and everything else. The last one was actually recorded on the PlayStation and then I've transferred it across to the uh, PC for editing. So, tier 10 match, like I say. Uh, I've not got the figures for the Centennial with me at the minute, um, because I've been trying to figure this out for most of the afternoon. I've not had a chance to actually get all the figures ready, so I do apologise, but it's got basically the hull from the Chieftain at tier 10. Uh, it's got quite a strong bouncy turret, but that machine gun cupola is quite a glaring and obvious weak spot to go for, so you have to try and keep it moving. And you've really got to hide your lower plate. Your upper plate is very, very bouncy. The side of your hull is quite weak. And you've not got a bad 90mm, actually. Decent penetration. Average 240 damage, which is pretty much standard for the 90mm. Um, and it's got a decent rate of fire and aiming time and whatever. And all around, it's, it's not a bad tank, to be honest. So I've come right down to the southernmost part of the map. And I'm creeping round. I'm going to try and use these bumps to use my gun depression to try and hit that E50M if I can. I don't want to go too far around because I don't know what else is out there and that was very poorly aimed. Could have done with aiming that one a lot better. And don't quite get reloaded in time before he actually pops back. And there's an IS-7 up there as well which is why I don't want to go blazing straight round after him. Not that I'd really be uh, in a hurry to take on an E50M on my own in a Centennial. You need to try and, uh, like I say, hide your lower plate. Try and hide your hull, but you've got to keep your turret moving so they can't get a fix on that machine gun turret. And I'm moving a little bit. Got some backup up here. Seeing if I can use the height there to see him, but I can't. He comes out, and I managed to get one into the side of him, though. Now I've got to keep an eye on the IS-7. I don't want to take a hit from him. And I've got to be careful. I mean, really, I'm sort of in the middle of them both. But they do seem pretty occupied, so it's not too bad. And I'll try and support these guys that are here. But there doesn't really seem that much for me to do, so I was just trying to reposition. I was keeping it out in the middle of the map, because that's looking a bit hairy. And I was just about to cross across. Well, yeah, cross across. Uh, just about to go across there, and then uh, the E50M pops out, so... I've got to hit into him, and I think I'm just basically stuck here. We have lost a tank. Although, I do manage to get across, finally. And it's just a case of attempting to get through the side of the IS-7, which is not one of the easiest things in a Tier 8 trying to finish off that E50M. I should have really waited and gone for the E50M. It, there's a possibility I could have finished him off then, but I went for that dodgy shot on the side of the IS-7. And, uh, yeah, he's not too keen on poking out of there, and I don't blame him. Let's see if we can get a shot into him. Go for his lower plate, and, yeah, but I have to take a hit in return, and it knocked my driver out. So I heal him, try and get back and put one more into him, but again, I take another hit, knocks my tracks off. And I'm in a bit of a dodgy situation now, definitely. Luckily though, I don't know if the IS-7 went for me and missed, or bounced, or, or went for somebody else there, I'm not sure what happened. But I managed to finish off the E-50M. The IS-7 gets taken out by the E-75. And it's not looking too bad. It's 6 8 in the enemy team's favour, but you know, we could be looking to pull it back. See if we can get these guys in a, a bit of a crossfire, and hopefully, those of our team in the cap circle might be able to hold out. Although, that is unfortunate that a medium has just popped up behind them, so now they're in a crossfire. Let's see if we can try and uh, help them out a bit and even the odds. 
T-54 running across there to go and lend a hand. Well, lend a hand to the enemy, it's not our T-54. And there's the RT. Let's see if we can take him out. There's one less thing to worry about. Yeah, between me and the E-75 he's done. And here comes the T-54 backing up. I don't think he's entirely aware that we were here at that point. And here comes the Death Star. Can I finish him off? Oh, not quite. I think that was a slightly low roll there. But the next one takes him out. Right, what have we got left? Well, we've now put it to 12-11 in our favour. So that's not too bad. Um, although, unfortunately, it's a T110E3 in the cap circle. And what do you reckon he's... Yeah, going to be facing this way in a minute. And T54 has now got a bit of health knocked off him, although... That's unfortunate, it's now 12-12. T54, T9 medium, you know, particularly... Uh, well, quite a good tier 9 medium, actually. A T110E3, which is very tough from the front. And I think that's an IS-3 behind them as well. So we're going to have to be careful here. I mean, I, I just don't even know where to hit the damn thing from the front. Not when that's all I've got to look at. I know, uh, I think that used to be a weak spot on top of that machine gun turret, but it's uh, been buffed a while back, I think. Although I might be getting mixed up with the PC version, it might never have been a weak spot on console. I'm not entirely sure. Now I'm going to, yeah, try and side scrape behind this wreck. Uh, and I'm just getting a bit desperate. It's like, do I back off and try and go round? It's going to take me a while to come round behind them. And they're probably going to realise what I'm doing. And I really did go back a bit too far there. But you, you've got to be very careful with the angle you present of your side in this tank. It's not very strong at all. I think it's 51 mil. So you do have to be very, very careful when you're side scraping. Took another bounce there, possibly off the turret, and I've loaded APCR, and I'm just trying to find weak spots on the front. But it just doesn't seem to be going particularly well. Go for the side of the Ice 3, and it just gets eaten by his tracks, and the T110E3 finishes me off. Yeah, yeah. Did, uh, I think I probably messed that up a little bit there, going back a bit too far. But we'll skip to the end, and unfortunately, it was a defeat. So, 69,000 credits. Uh, although I did get the. Uh, Le Le I, do you know I can't pronounce half of these medals? I got the one for killing two tanks, two tiers above me in a medium tank. Lever Slyos medal. There we go. I'll have a, a good attempt. So, a couple of thousand damage done, but I did come top of the table, and that's probably because I was a tier 8 uh, in a tier 10 match. And I'd, Nope, no assisted. Did block a fair old uh, amount though. Well, it's a fair old amount. It wasn't too bad on the block to damage. But there you go. Just because you're bottom tier in a match doesn't mean that you can't come out of it on top. Right, next one for you. It's the T-34-2. It's on Arden. It's a standard battle. And this is my wife driving this. I've been wanting to get out the T-34-2 recently. It's been sat in my garage for a long time, actually. Um, I don't know. Things have just got in the way of me actually, you know, getting out of this thing now. You know, doing various reviews and that sort of thing. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just, like I say, not really uh, got out of it yet. Keep meaning to do the daily double in it, but never really get round to it. So I've decided to make a bit of a push in it recently, and uh, my wife's been helping me out. And this was uh, quite a, a fun match, and you see some of the strengths of this. It is a fast uh, flanking medium, and it can, you know, it can get out of trouble almost as quickly as it can get into it. But if you do end up sort of getting up close with something, um, you know, you've got to be careful with stuff that's uh, higher tier than you, but the same tier stuff, if you do get close, just keep moving about them as close as you can and your turret can normally 
save you. You can normally bounce a few sort of ill-timed shots. You know, it's uh, it's not as bouncy as say the Type 59, but it's it's not a bad turret at all. So she's gone around the sort of southern tip of the town and back into it. Across the road, keeping an eye out for the uh, for the enemy tanks and going across the road. The view range isn't too bad on this. Uh, it's not the best, but it, it's uh, like I say, certainly not too bad. And actually spotted a couple of tanks going across there. Uh, there's no eye down at the end of the road. Should have enough pen to get through the front of one of those. Uh, I think they're 150. I'm sure that with this gun, it's the 100 mil that's on this, and you can get 120 mil on it as well with 175 pen. But the rate of fire is quite low. Uh, but with this 100 mil, it's I think it's 250 average damage, and I want to say about 181 to 189 pen. I can't remember the exact figure though. I think it is 181. It should just be enough to get through the front of that. Maybe not from that distance because that is sort of average pen at 100 meters. There's a KV-85, I think it was, just popped up then. Got to keep an eye out for him. There he is. Oh, and an SU-100 takes a pot shot and starts backing off. Which is in a bit of a bad situation. There's a, a tank destroyer down the street behind her. There's no eye in front. Uh, with an SU-100 as well up on the hill. I don't know if the SU-100's quite aware that she's here. He gets round the OI and just basically relying on the hopefully long reload if he's got the 15cm and the fact that it takes him an age to turn his turret and his hull and she manages to zip down a road, get away, put a pot shot into that guy as she goes past and just gets the hell out of there because that was just a, a bad place to be enemy tanks on both sides in front and behind right so she managed to get out of that and now it's just a case of uh, keeping an eye out on that medium on the right but he's having a go at the uh, the two ATs and the T29 has just taken out one of the ATs and now she's just waiting to get another shot into the hull and that one actually finishes him off now it's a low profile machine so that fountain was enough to actually hide the tank. And you can just hide behind the wreck of this and just shoot through the top of the wrecked damage model. Puts a shot into the KV-85, get another one into him, yep there we go. There's not much that he can shoot at and that one in fact bounced. And that's KV-85 dealt with. Now, time to try and deal with that STA-2 that was behind her. Manages to get a shot into him, but he gets one back in in return. Oh, and takes some damage from the OI from behind. Rams the STA-2 to death. And now, he's really got to try and get away from that OI before he reloads. Now, where's she going to go? down this way, try and get around. See if we can come round and get on the side of that OI. The front's quite tough and fairly well angled as well in places, but the uh, the sides are quite weak and oh dear, a full health IS-3, not what you want to come across, and is Cena. Now, I'm not entirely sure what he just fired at then. Now this is a bad situation. If there was a bit more open ground and flat ground, I could possibly get up and get around him to circle him. But not where he is at the minute. Not on the edge of that river, that's going to be very, very difficult. Back off a bit. See if we can spot him. Don't want to lose sight of him and even just pop up. And put one straight into the side as he's trying to retreat. There he is. Oh, too late. And uh, unfortunately, that was the end of the match. So I think we'll uh, skip it to the end and see how it actually went. And that one was a victory. So quite a nice little match. 2,424 damage done. And a, a second class mastery, like I say. 
it was uh, quite a fun little match zipping about the town and uh, it was quite entertaining so I thought I'd put that one on for you now the next replay coming up like I say was recorded on the PlayStation and then I put it onto the uh, onto the laptop for editing using my new setup and uh, like I say it is a new setup and I've just realized what time it is and it has taken me a while to sort of mess about with it and get used to it but it will be uh, it will be a bit better next time and that's one of the disadvantages of using a capture card to record I'm gonna have to turn my notifications off um, I did forget about that but there you go and uh, like I say it has taken me a little bit to get used to it tonight but hopefully tomorrow it should be up at a bit of an earlier time like I say the first time I've uh, I've used this and I quite like it it's, uh, it's not a bad editing piece of uh, editing software when I can get my words out and get a bit muddled up now right so here we are uh, this is actually on my wife's account it's a tier seven match I believe uh, and it's a very gorsk and it's a standard battle and this was from probably a couple of weeks ago maybe uh, yeah tier seven match and uh, I was basically helping her out on her account she's wanting to get through the British heavies up to the conqueror and uh, the chieftain up at the top there and she's got up to the black prince at the minute and you know she likes the black prince she can use it but she was just getting a bit fed up with it so uh, I said I'd uh, offer a hand and try and do a couple of matches in it and uh, if I remember rightly because like I say this was a couple of weeks ago I think it starts off not really looking to be a particularly good match and uh, but it turns good in the end now while I'm looking for a bit of trouble uh, I did mention about the T-34 that I bought on Monday and then I was a bit annoyed that uh, the black version was going on on Friday with that massive 75% XP bonus so I contacted Wargaming and raised a ticket basically and uh, contacted them and uh, they got back in touch and what they've said is that anybody who's bought one of the tanks is going to be in the Black Friday Black Tanks bundle since the 1st of November this year um, will be able to, to raise a ticket when the sale starts of the black tanks on Friday and uh, as long as they have the tank in the garage and they have the gold difference in price because they are more expensive uh, the T-34 for example is 14,000 as opposed to the standard 12,000 so if you have the uh, extra gold in your garage and you've got the tank in your garage you can submit a ticket to have it swapped for the black version anything that's bought before the 1st of November though doesn't count so yeah if you've basically bought any of the tanks that are going to have black editions you can if you want have it swapped to a black edition if you bought it since the 1st of this month November so there you go a bit of information for you so I'm happy about that I'm willing to put up the uh, extra little bit of gold to get my black T-34 like I say if I'd have known about it I wouldn't have bought the T-34 and I would have waited till Friday. Anyway, back to the match. Can I get a shot on that AMX? Well, it's a, a moot point now because he's been taken out. Got a girls and Panzer over there. Gup. Not a bad tank. Well, it's the Panzer 4H. Basically, it's a fully upgraded Panzer 4H, and it's uh, not a bad little tank. I like the Panzer 4H. It's got good gun depression, uh, fairly decent gun on it as well, and uh, the frontal armor is not too savage. I think it's about 80 mil. It is a bit flat, but you can uh, angle it and bounce a few shots, especially when you're top tier. And now, the Black Prince is one of those tanks, and it's a bit like the, the ATs and, you know, the the slow American tank destroyers, T-28, etc. That if you kind of go the wrong way at the beginning of the match, it can end quite poorly for you with you not really doing much. And that's kind of what it looked like when I got down here um, we found artillery so hopefully I can take them out but no just miss and there he is careening down the hill and miss again but that one wasn't RNG that was just my crap aim gonna get in this time and it just hits his tracks typical I finally managed to hit the little bugger as he's running away and I think I just leave him for somebody else to finish off I've had enough of that guy and then I can't even hit this tiger either. There we go. Now that's the thing with the Black Prince. It's uh, got a good rate of fire. It's got fairly decent pen for its tier. It's not 
the best penetration. I mean, the Tiger's got 203, is it? I think this is 171. But, it, you know, you can make it work. But it's got a good rate of fire. It's got very tough armour, especially if you angle it well. Now, that Tiger's come down, and... I'm pretty confident at this point, judging by what's left, that... The RT have basically run away. Um, and I thought to myself that that tank destroyer and that heavy tank could probably take out that Tiger. And I'd seen the enemy tanks coming across the northern side of the map towards our cap. And I'd also seen that we basically don't have any tanks left alive up there. And I'm a very slow tank, which is why I started heading back fairly soon. To try and hopefully intercept before we get capped out now. Managed to finish off that low health tiger. I've got artillery taking a couple of shots at me now as well, which is uh, always nice. And uh, yeah, there we go. We just started getting capped. It was that light tank who's now running for artillery. But there were a lot more tanks heading that way, so I do still have that feeling that we're probably going to get capped out at some point. And I can't remember if I was. Uh, I did lose track of the map a little bit. I was just thinking, you know, I've got to get back. I know this tank's over here, so I've got to be careful. And I've got to get back. And I think it was around this point that I thought that that heavy of ours down in the south of the map had taken out the enemy heavy down there. And then I noticed that one artillery had gone down. We're getting capped again. There's the light, and uh, there's a heavy as well, a Tiger P. Badly damaged, that's not too bad. And uh, they're both heading to try and finish off the remaining arty. Now I think, actually, yeah, that heavy did take care of the, uh, the enemy heavy down in the south of the map. And now he's going after artillery. I think it was the tank destroyer got killed. And that's the one I wasn't paying attention about. So at this point I'm thinking, right... Well, there's two enemy artillery. I've just seen them pop up on the map. We've got an artillery. Then all of a sudden, uh, our tank gets taken out. And it's basically just me and an arty. And, uh, yeah, there's six enemies left. Two artillery, a couple of heavies, a medium, and a light tank. Now, there's one of the heavies. There's the medium. It's the Firefly. And he wasn't looking my way, so I managed to get a hit into him, get another one into him, as he tries to get into cover. And he's basically got the same gun as me. Um, I don't think he's got quite the rate of fire that I have, or it might be the other way around. But yeah, so he's got 171, 150 as well, and he, you know, he does have a good rate of fire. And yeah, that's the point that I realise I am now on my own against these six enemies. So, uh, yeah, I think it was one of those moments where, you know, you're starting to, like, your hands are sweaty and your mouth's going dry, your heart's going, doo -dum, doo -dum, doo -dum, doo -dum, and it's like, great, me, six enemies, and I've got to try and take them on one at a time, or, you know, I've got to try and basically get rid of this guy before anybody else turns up. Artie decides to have a go, but luckily it doesn't really do much damage, like I say, it's a very well armoured machine. Uh, and then the Chaffee turns up. Now, he's more of a distraction than anything else. I don't really have to worry too much about him penetrating my armour. As you can see, you know, he's just bouncing around, he's chasing around. That's when the Firefly pops back up. And I'm just trying to turn around, get a shell into him, and it sets him on fire, which actually kills him. Which was very lucky, because the OI Experimental turned up then. So, I was just lucky enough to sort of finish off one enemy as another one turned up until this point when the OI experimental turned up. Luckily he was damaged so it was just one shot and then the Tiger P is coming at me as well now. Now he's not got very good gun depression and I am angled against him so I managed to finish off the Tiger P and fortunately avoid artillery as well but I know that they're coming there you go. So I'm trying to get up close against this cliff to try and make it as hard as possible for artillery to hit me. Now, I've got two choices. I can either chase artillery, and they are much faster than I am. I'm in a black prince. Or, I can head for the enemy cap 
and hope that I can get there before those artillery get to my cap because that's what I thought they were going to do I thought they were basically going to look and you know try and figure out which way I was going to go and try and skirt around and get to my cap to try and cap out before I can get to theirs and the worst case scenario for me now is if I'm just about to enter the enemy cap and yeah one of them starts capping me I mean if both of them go up there I've got no chance because the two can sort of cap well in half the time that I can on my own and all the time I'm sort of half expecting an arty to pop up somewhere and I didn't want to take quite a direct route so I do come around this way a little bit to kind of sneak and stick closer to the buildings rather than going straight across that open ground for the cap but I would have thought that if anything was over that way I would have spotted it possibly by now if anything was near the cap but it's just a case of making my way there watching and waiting now where are the arty I've got to be careful they're not going to be waiting around a corner to shotgun me because the pair of them if they did it even if they didn't penetrate they could probably finish me off oh there's one on the right it's the M41 now if I can just get him to fire oh that was a, a bit of a misjudge by me but he's fired and missed as well and I am definitely going to beat his reload there's one and there's the second right so now it's me and the gorilla I think it is and at this point I'm you know I need to get in cap I found one of the arty which probably means the other one is making a run for our cap so I've got to get there first and just hope I'm, I was just expecting our cap timer to go off any second it's just so painstakingly slow this thing at this point and there we go I've started capping first now if we can get to about six seconds then even if he got into our cap then yeah we're about six seconds in so it doesn't matter now he's got to come back to defend or he's got to lose my capping so I'm going to keep moving in case he decides to try and drop stuff in and then wherever he drops it I'm probably going to go and sit wherever it impacted because they very rarely shoot the same spot twice I'm just keeping an eye out keeping moving so he can't sneak up on me and sort of get a shot on a stationary target and just thinking where, oh there he is can I get him, oh I should have waited for that to fully aim but he missed as well and put it into the ground and now it's just a case of can I get the second shot in before he gets into cover he's going for it but no managed to finish him off and what appeared to be a bit of a crappy round at the beginning because I thought I'd gone the wrong way well it ended up with my uh, if you were keeping count my second Radley Walters there with eight kills and my very first collar ban offs and it wasn't even on my account um, but came out of that with a first class master as well and obviously the top gun and the devastator to go with the radleys uh, and a high caliber so there you go i apologize for it being a bit late tonight but i'm getting used to my editing software and hopefully it will all sound and look okay and uh, i'll be back tomorrow with another video so uh, as always take care out there and i'll catch you next time see you later